How's everybody doing? Doing good? All right, all right. Well, I'm really excited for this next session. Uh, this is going to be a chance for us to get to know. What's amazing about the summit is we have young people, we have leaders from the business world, the nonprofit world, educational institutions. This next session is going to give us a chance to really have a conversation uh, with people that we don't already know. And to, before we go into that, I have two incredible opportunity leaders with me on stage here. Um, as you all know, uh, we had opportunity leaders from all over the country, uh, 100 come yesterday, go on the Hill, uh, talk about bipartisan policies and be empowered in that way, and then training and strategizing with each other. And I have two incredible opportunity leaders with me that are gonna share their opportunity moment. Uh, so that hopefully that gets us thinking uh, for once we break into conversations at our table. So first, I'm gonna introduce Philip Tryon from Austin, Texas. Give it up for Philip. Thanks, Paul. Share his opportunity moment. Yeah, mentoring is a very important topic to me. See, I acknowledge that I would not be where I am today if it had not been for the many people investing into my life. There have been many, numerous of them, and all of them have been pretty unique, but all the lessons I've learned have been equally beneficial. See, I think back to like eighth grade, uh, when my teacher, Mr. Kirby, would not allow me to come back from lunch until I had registered for all advanced classes. Or I think back to 10th grade, uh, when my Spanish teacher, Ms. Lopez, confronted me in front of the entire class because I was passively allowing another individual to criticize my biracial identity. You see, Mr. Kirby taught me to strive for excellence at a young age, uh, but Ms. Lopez taught me the significance and the importance of using my voice to stand up for not only myself, but for what I believe in. So I now want to take those same practices, those same ideals, and apply it to the, student, the students, high school and college students that I currently work with. Um, because I believe that everybody is capable of greatness. It's just sometimes the only impetus that that indivi individual needs is for another mentor to come alongside them and believe in them. Thank you. Well, Philip. Absolutely. And now I, I want to introduce Brandy Williams from New Orleans, Louisiana. Hi, guys. I grew, up, I grew up in an area in New Orleans that was once known as the murder capital of the world. Everywhere I looked, there was crime and violence. Books were not as readily available as drugs, sex, or even pillaging in our cities and our streets. I saw people shot and murdered every day. But for me, it was the hope that mentors gave me that helped me to get out of that system of poverty, that cycle of destruction and despair, to do what I do today. I stand before you with the ability to say, I can give hope, opportunity, and inspiration to others through a program that I run for Tulane University called Earn and Learn. We take 18 to 24 year old individuals and put them back into school and work while paying them a sustainable wage. Many of our individuals in the program have never seen anyone care for them, love them, or give them support or hope. So it is my hope and desire and privilege to be able to work with them and give them the things that someone gave me so that we can all see a brighter future. So that's what We Got This is all about. One of the five pillars, mentorship. We have to help every young person in America have that support. And so if you're at a table right now with the people you already know, uh, the people that you came with, folks that are all from your sectors, once we break into this first question, I want you to get up and move to somewhere else. We, we, we really want to make sure you're talking to people you don't already know uh, and, and talking to folks from, from different sectors. Um, and really excited, we're, we're gonna have one question and then we're gonna come back and then we're gonna ask you guys another question that we want you talking through. So Philip, why don't you go ahead and give us the first uh, discussion question. Yeah, sure. Uh, the first one is simply discuss who are you, where are you from, and what possibly what accomplishment are you proud of um, in your life? Um, so you can begin that discussion. You can also talk about what work you're currently doing in your communities, whether it's in your school or with your job. All right, we're going to come back in, uh, in a few minutes. So go ahead and have a good conversation. And be tweeting, hashtag opportunity moment, hashtag op summit, and uh, let us know what your opportunity moments are. All right, everyone, hold on one second. If we can come back. Hope you're having good discussions. It seems like it. Uh, and this is what I think is so incredible about this gathering. Uh, that we got to connect across uh, these different intergenerational s sector lines. 
Uh, I want to go to Eva Shang, who's out here. Eva, if you can wave to everyone. Everyone say hello to Eva Shang. Um, uh, give it up for Eva Shang. She deserves it. Eva is another one of our incredible opportunity leaders. And so she is going to share with us her opportunity moment and then, and then just kind of some of the things that she's been hearing. She was moving among you and you didn't even, you didn't even know, uh, but she's been hearing some good things. So Eva, why don't you tell us about your opportunity moment and, uh, and some of the things that you're hearing. Of course. So I'm a sophomore at Harvard College, but more importantly, I hail from the great city of Philadelphia. <laughs> So my opportunity moment was when I was 15 years old, I got an opportunity to intern at the office of Philadelphia Councilwoman Blondell Reynolds Brown. And this is a transformational experience for me, getting on that train every day and going to an office where I could see public service in action. So Councilwoman Brown cares so deeply about the rights of women, of children, of ending gun violence. And that changed my life and convinced me that I wanted to go into public service. So now at Harvard, I lead a nationwide student network for students working in prison education and reform. And we're taking action against solitary confinement in juvenile detention centers and for access to higher education for youth coming out of federal prisons. But now I want to talk about three other fellow Philadelphians that I met while I was in the audience. And they come from Montgomery County College, uh, Community College, and a program called Gateway to College. And one of the kids there said that it really changed his life. Having adults who believed in him and told him that no matter what he went through, even though he was stabbed eight times as a youth, he could make it out. And that he could make it to a place where he could succeed. That entire experience shows that mentorship and having an adult who believes in you can really change a youth's life. So thank you all for being here and continue with your discussion. I'll hand it back to Paul. All right, thank you. Give it up for Eve, everybody. Wow, clearly some incredible conversations happening. So Brandy is gonna give us our second set of questions uh, for your second discussion time. So as we're sitting and talking with everyone, I want you guys to think about what are some barriers to mentoring and what are some solutions that we can possibly create so that we can all start to connect better? What would you like to see happen with connections and how can we make it happen more readily in our communities? Yeah, we wanna think broadly about opportunity and, and so, so what are the barriers to opportunity, especially the young, pe young adults, young people who are here, what are the barriers that you're seeing? What are the solutions you wanna see more of? Um, and, and are there ways that we can work together? So we're gonna give you all uh, a few minutes to have that discussion. All right, all right, I hope everyone has had, uh, I know this is a short, uh, a short time to tackle such big issues, but I hope you've gotten to know um, some people that you didn't know already. And the bottom line is, when we get back to the places where we're from, we need to be mentoring, whether it's peer mentoring, whether it's young people, whether it's creating these things within the businesses we work for, uh, as nonprofits, partnering uh, in places that we can increase this, but uh, we need to keep these discussions going, and, and I hope this was uh, a good one. I hope, I hope you stay in contact with the people that you talk to, uh, but we got this, again, is all about that every young person in America needs to be heard, and needs to be listened to, and needs to be supported, and so I hope the learning was really going both ways, and I hope that really continues uh, well beyond this session. And so Philip uh, has a few closing remarks. Yeah, on behalf of all the Opportunity Nation leaders, we want to thank you for being here and for contributing um, to such meaningful discussions. You know, by connecting young Americans to uh, beneficial, to seamless education and career pathways, we benefit our communities, our country, and our companies as well. See, I believe that we can be the group to fulfill the, this mission of uh, Opportunity Nation that no individual's life will be destined by the zip code that they're born into or the family that they're born in as well. So remember guys, we got this. <laughs> <laughs>